Right guys, how are we doing? Welcome back. Um, today I'm going to talk about RMS and how to fix it and try and skip as much of the nonsense as possible because we've all been there where we've recorded our audiobook. Uh, it's the first or second one we've done. We're still trying to find our feet with everything and you get as far as the upload. Everything sounds great. You go onto ACX or whatever platform and then you get that Ooh, that heinous error message that says RMS is too high or too low. So you shoot over to Google, bashing Google, RMS, what the hell? How the hell do I fix this shit? And you just get barraged with stuff like root mean squared and other nonsense that just makes your brain fry. So this is the simple guide specific to audiobooks of how to fix your RMS to ACX standards specifically. Although that's kind of just an industry standard. So before we jump into it, because I will show you an example, but first let me explain roughly what RMS is, because the concept is very simple, but it's very difficult to explain. And if you look it up in a generalized sort of audio production term, it gets very in depth. So think of RMS like this. RMS is the average loudness of your audio. So you have a thing called dynamic range, which is the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part. Now, if you have a very low dynamic range, i.e. all of your recording is basically exactly the same volume, that's your RMS right there. Whatever you, level you've recorded at, that's the average loudness. Now, if you have points where there's sound, and it's where there's sound, it's all the same sound, it's the same volume, and then you have quiet, room tone, or silence, the RMS is the, now the average between that and that. If you have a long period of sound and then a short period of quiet, the average is going to be quite high. You're going to have a high RMS. If it's the other way around, if you have a low, uh, a, a long quiet period and a short loud period, well now you have a very quiet RMS. And this gets a lot more complicated because as you speak, the volume's jumping up and down all over the place. So if your RMS is too quiet, it means on an average, everything's too quiet. If your RMS is too loud, that means on average, everything's too loud and you need to bring it down. Now this gets doubly complicated because in the digital workspace for audio, the loudest point is zero dB. And then everything is indexed down from zero. So you can go from zero, which is your loudest, all the way down to negative infinite. But negative three is quieter than zero. And negative six is quieter than negative three. So you need to flip your mind back to front as to wishy-washy which way you need to go. If your track is too loud, you need a, a, a higher number, but it's a negative number. So if it's RMS of like minus 10 and you need to turn it down, you're going to turn it down so the RMS is at like negative 13. Now the range for audio or a general guide and what ACX requires is your RMS needs to be between uh, negative 18 at loudest and negative 23 at the quietest. So you sort of want to look at it the other way around. It needs to be from negative 23 to negative 18. Negative 23 being the quietest negative 18 being the loudest. <clears throat> so once you understand, right, I need to get my averages, my average loudness into that bracket, how the hell do I do it? Because if your RMS is too quiet, which is what it normally is, well, you can only turn the track up so much, right? Because you need to stay under the peak of negative 3 dB. You can't go over that. So if you have a really long track with one really loud section and the rest is really quiet and you turn it up to negative 3 dB, your RMS is still going to be too low because the rest of it's too quiet. So the way you fix that is that tiny little bit that's really loud, you turn that bit down so it's in level with everything else and then turn the whole lot up. Now you have a much higher average loudness and that's how you get a louder um, RMS. So how the hell do you do that with a two hour audiobook recording? Because you can't sit there and just manually do it. Well, you could, but <laughs> ain't no one got time for that. This is where audio compression comes in. So 
Audio compression, I'll show you that as well in a second, is where you take everything that's loud and make it quieter. It's closing, it's reducing the dynamic range. So the dynamic range is between what is the loudest point and the quietest point. The difference between them is your dynamic range. So what we're gonna do is turn down the loudest parts until they match the quieter parts. You're like, yeah, but we're trying to make RMS louder, right? Okay, cool, but once you've brought that down, you can then bring the whole lot up. So if you have loud bits and quiet bits, we crush the loud bits down, and then we bring the whole lot back up. And so the average volume, the average loudness rather, is increased, and our RMS is higher. Now, compressors have two settings that you need to concern yourself with. Um, one is threshold, and the other is ratio. So if threshold just says at what point it starts doing shit. Ratio is how much shit it does. Ratio is really easy. It's a fraction. A ratio of two is two to one. A ratio of three is three to one. So if you have a ratio of two, you're halving everything, right? Compressors make things quieter, it's turning stuff down. So your ratio of two makes your thing that's this loud half as loud. It turns it down by a ratio of two. The threshold, it's easy. That's at what point it starts doing that shit. So it starts at the top and works down. Because remember, everything's indexed backwards, downwards from zero. So if you have a threshold of zero, everything gets chopped in half. If you have a threshold of minus 10, everything over minus 10 will get chopped down by half and everything under minus 10 will be left alone. See where this is going? So a good guide to start with for audiobooks would be to do a ratio of uh, two, two to one, and a uh, threshold of like 20, negative 20. Then everything over negative 20 is gonna get chopped in half. So if you had a peak of zero and you run a compressor at negative 20, two to one, then you'll probably find that your new peak is gonna be around negative 10. Now that means you can raise, you can normalize everything back up and add like 10 dB to your overall ratio. Right, let's jump to my PC and I will show you how to do it. Okay, right, so we're here, we're at the workstation. I'm using Audition, but these principles work for any door that you're using. Um, the only thing that's a little bit tricky is measuring RMS. Uh, there's normally in most DAWs some sort of amplitude statistics type measuring tool, uh, literally called amplitude statistics, amplitude statistics in Audition. Um, Audacity can be a bit trickier, but the easiest way with Audacity is to use the ACX check plugin uh, that just measures the RMS and the peaks and even tells you if it's right or wrong. Reaper's a little bit difficult because, as, so far as I know, I think you have to play through the whole track in order for it to measure the RMS. But however you do it, you need to measure the RMS. So here's a quick recording that I did, just average spoken word dialogue that you might expect in, I don't know, like the opening credit file of a book. This is the beginner's guide to fixing RMS. Everything that you need to know to get your audiobook RMS correct. Let's get into it and let's get it fixed. Okay, so this is just my raw recording. Uh, I'm not gonna bother processing it or mastering or anything, we're just gonna get the RMS in. Uh, as you can see, it's loud here, loud here, quiet everywhere else. There's no big gaps or anything that's really throwing us off. It's just a case of it's here and it's here. So I've already normalized it to negative 3 dB. A good tip to ne normalize to negative 3.1, by the way, just to give you a little bit of headroom. Um, but when we measure it, our RMS is negative 27, which it needs to be 18 to 23 and 27, negative 27 is down here. So we need to make this clip a lot louder, but we can't just crank up the volume because as soon as we do that, our loud bits clip, right? So like I say, we can negatively uh, manually, you know, make all these smaller if we want, uh, but we don't want to do that. We want to run a compressor. There is a compressor in every DOW. You don't need a fancy one. The basic one will do. Uh, do, do, do. You know what? Actually, what we can do here is I will whack a compressor into our FX rack. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. So everything on here is disabled except for this, which is our compressor. There's about eight different compressors in Audition. There's about eight in every DAW. They all basically do the same damn thing. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the spectral view because we don't need that. I'm going to open the preview. And now we're going to be able to see live as I adjust the settings on the compressor, uh, what happens to the audio afterwards. So this is before at the top and this is after underneath. So if I turn the compressor off, let it catch up. This is exactly the same. If I turn the compressor on, so we've got it set at the moment, three to one at negative 17. So let's go back with what I said originally, which is a good starting point, two to one. Uh, I can't remember if I said 20 or 25, but let's go 25. So what this is saying is everything that's louder than negative 25 dB, hack it in half. So when we turn this back on, we'll notice the loud bits look, these bits a lot quieter now. But the, the, the quieter bits, they've not really changed. So this looks good for our particular audio here. Uh, this is a destructive editor, so when I do stuff, it changes permanently. If you're using a non-destructive editor like Reaper, you have to leave the effects in your effects rack and then render the file. But because it's destructive, I can hit apply and then boom, this is our new audio. So now, if we measure the RMS, it's going to be even quieter, negative 32, jeez. But because the dynamic range is shorter, the lower, the gaps between the loud bits and the quieter bits is better, when we normalize, boom, there we go, we're in. Because now the quieter bits are much louder than the top one. Now the reason you want this is because if your dynamic range is too big, when your listeners listening to the audiobook you've recorded, they have to crank it up to listen to the quiet bits and then it, it, it blows their eardrums out when they, the loud bits come up. Or if they, if they have the volume set for the loud bits, it's too quiet to hear the quiet bits. So you need, to, you need to have some dynamic range so it's not bland to listen to and it doesn't sound flat, but it needs to be all within the same range that the same volume setting on the headphones can deal with. So let's have a listen to this now. This is the beginner's guide to fixing RMS. Everything that you need to know to get your audiobook RMS correct. Let's get into it and let's get it fixed. Beautiful, this lovely, is just what we want. The only thing you really need to uh, keep an eye on or, or keep in mind is when you compress and then raise everything again but for, or normalize everything, you're, you're increasing the volume of everything, you are increasing the volume of everything and that includes your room tone. And this is why having a good recording to start with is really important because as soon as you start compressing and normalizing, the room tone and the room noise or the mic noise, that sort of stuff starts getting lifted up with everything else. It's like a rising tide, everything starts coming back up. But that's it, I hope that helps, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if it was helpful, leave a comment if you have questions. Um, and until next time, peace out, I'll see you in the next video.